Now, home exercise program is super important. This part is where the patient can have the power, can have the ability to control what they're doing and be in control potentially about of all their symptoms and their pains. So you as a therapist have to be strategic about which home exercise program that you're giving them because it will not only make them feel better, but it'll also give him the control, give them the control of, hey, I can actually do something to modulate my pain or my symptoms. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to this physical therapy series. If you're just tuning in and you don't know who I am, <laughs> my name is Justin Lee, doctor of physical therapy student and fitness coach. Here you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. I truly believe that lifting not only weights, but also each other can encourage excellence and empower greatness. So whatever journey that you're in, I believe in you and I support you and I'm here to lift you up. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change people. All right, so in part three for the treatment, I went over briefly about the home exercise program, but let's talk about that here for a little bit first and then we'll get into the education piece. Now, home exercise program is super important. This part is where the patient can have the power, can have the ability to control what they're doing and be in control potentially about of all their symptoms and their pains. So you as a therapist have to be strategic about which home exercise program that you're giving them because it will not only make them feel better, but it'll also give him the control, give them the control of, hey, I can actually do something to modulate my pain or my symptoms. Now, the exercise that you choose or you select to give them has to be really important and very important for the patient. This part is important because this is where you as a therapist are now almost starting to sell yourself, right? You're giving them tools to help them. And then if those tools get make them feel better, then yeah, they're gonna come back and they're gonna say you're the greatest therapist of all time. Now, selecting the home exercise program has to be pretty important and strategic because you can't give everyone the same exact home exercise program. And I'm sure those of you who are interested in physical therapy or have already been an aide for physical therapy, you probably have witnessed that some physical therapists will give a uh, custom, not a customized, but a, um, a printout, like a template of, oh, you have some low back pain here, just do these exercises. And it's already pre-made. It's not specific for the patient. And they just print it out and say, here you go. Now I'm not bashing on any therapists that do that. And sure, a lot of exercises do overlap. And a lot of the exercises you'll give the same ones, the same home exercise programs to a lot of patients that have similar diagnoses but it does change and every exercise should be unique for each patient. So what do I mean by that? So sometimes you might give an exercise, like let's say a hip flexor stretch, for example, and they're on their knee, right? And then they're doing the stretch, but some patients can't go on their knee. So you can't give that hip flexor stretch that same one for that same patient. Meaning you have to modulate and figure out how can I stretch the hip flexors without having them go on their knee? Oh, hey, maybe I can have them go off their table or go off their couch and then do a prone hip flexor stretch. That might be more appropriate for them than doing something on their knee. So choosing the right one is super, super, super important. And you have to make sure that the patient is able to do it as well. Which brings me to my second point. When you give the home exercise program to somebody, make sure you watch them and go through a full round or at least one full set of an exercise so they know at least how to do it. And two, you're able to watch them and know that, all right, they're doing it actually correctly versus like, uh, they are not doing that correctly at all. And then they'll come back to you and say, the exercise made me worse. So whose fault is it? Is it the patient's fault that they didn't know how to do the exercise? Sure, there were directions on there, but they don't. people don't know how to follow directions, right? Or is it the PT's fault where the PT didn't even watch how the, how the patient performs the exercise and just assume that they knew how to do it? Yeah, 
I mean, I don't know about you, but I always take the blame. Before I point my finger to somebody else, I say, what did I do wrong? And how could I change to get a better outcome? And I hope you guys as students or you guys as people who are trying to get into physical therapy school with academics or just, I guess, things in li your life in general, I hope that that is something that you guys will learn from this as well is that instead of trying to point the finger out and keep blaming other people for your own mistakes, point the finger at yourself and say, all right, how can I fix this mistake and how can I make it better? Because that's something that you have full, full, full control over versus pointing it out and saying like, yeah, it's you that did it, right? You, you, you. Don't do that. Point the finger at yourself analyze yourself reflect on yourself and then say okay how can i do better what can i eliminate how can i improve how can i refine myself okay so now let's talk about education now there are four different questions you want to ask yourself so that that are those are the four things that you want to communicate to the patient one what's going on here two how long is this going to take three what are we going to do for physical therapy and four how can the patient help themselves to get better? Now, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, and those of you who have the PhysioU app, I don't know if you guys know, but there is a, education, a patient education part in this app. And that is the coolest part, I think, in my personal opinion, on how to give a framework of how to educate. Because, I mean, I talked about this before, but man, education is so, so, so powerful. Like I didn't, at first, I didn't realize how like important it was. I thought it was just a fluke. Like, oh yeah, you're educating people, but what makes the real difference is like when I do some manual therapy or, or if we do some exercise. But you know, honestly, there's been some times in my, in, in, when during my internships where I literally did not even touch the patient. I just simply educated them on telling them what's going on, telling them like, this is what you can do to help yourself. This is how long it's gonna take. And I didn't even do, I literally did not touch them at all. And they already felt better. And you can just tell like, they were just holding so many burdens on their shoulder, like this pain, this unknown thing of like, oh my gosh, like this is going to like, this is going to ruin my life. They started catastrophizing and they just went down this negative road and this spiral, right? And then here you are as a physical therapist telling them like, look, it's okay. What you're feeling is normal. What you're feeling is already, you're already getting better right now as we speak. And you are that vessel to instill hope into those patients who are just going down that spiral. And when you do educate them and you can just see the, their eyes light up and see that glimpse of hope, that that moment right there is is like, that's what I live for, you know? It's I think it's those moments that really make, that really remind me that physical therapy is really the profession that I want to get into because that is the place where I feel like I'm making the most impact and helping people out the most. So it is in your best, best, best option, favor, whatever it is, to really know the answers to those questions, right? What's going on? That's why you have to study. How long should it take? That's why you should know your tissue healing time. What are we gonna do for physical therapy? You have to make sure that you're skilled enough to know like to give the right intervention so that they're actually going to get better and then to match that with the right home exercise program, which is what they can do to help themselves at home. That's why it's super important to not only educate them, but also educate yourself. And that's why the PhysioU apps are super great because it gives you a framework or an example of how to educate some patients. So let's use our facet syndrome and our physical therapy evaluation that we've been going through and talk about how the PhysioU app shows a framework of how to educate the patient if someone came in with facet syndrome. All right, so let's start with what's going on. This is where you tell the patient, like after you do your evaluation, you say, all right, so this is what I think is going on. Joints need regular movement to maintain their flexibility. Over time, either as you age or if you sit too long, your joints can stiffen. There are many joints in your lower back and any one of them can become stiff due to lack of movement. This type of pain might be the result of a fall, lifting incorrectly, right? A bending or twisting or a poor posture and body mechanics. 
Sometimes the muscles overwork to protect your back, limiting the movement in your joints, contributing to stiffness, and that's why your back might feel tight, which is, which those are all things that I found in my physical therapy evaluation. And you can also do more selling, right? Selling again and say, hey, look, remember when I did this test and now it felt really stiff? Yeah, that's the area that we're gonna work on. And if that area gets less stiff, then you're gonna have more mobility in your back and you're gonna feel better, right? All right, so how long will it take? Most people with their lower back pain that recently occurred will recover in about six weeks. For the people whose low back stiffness does not go away completely after six weeks, they can manage the stiffness with exercising, stretching, activity, and body mechanic modifications. So what are we gonna do in therapy? Your healthcare provider will perform a detailed evaluation of joints in your back that could be contributing to your pain. Your treatment from your healthcare provider may target your joints with mobilizations, traction, and or stretches to help decrease your stiffness and improve your ability to move. Your healthcare provider will review the proper body mechanics for sitting, lifting, moving to protect your back. Healthcare provider is you, by the way, as a physical therapist. <laughs> okay, and lastly, what can you do to help yourself? Avoid postures or motions that increase your symptoms, right? So if something hurts, don't do that. Do not stay in one position for too long. Make sure you take at least 30 second breaks every hour to do one of the exercises your physical therapist suggested. Move in ways that help decreases your symptoms, like one, try to unload tissues through positioning, movements, or with assistive of props like pillows, or two, try movements that restore motion to the stiff region without causing residual symptoms. And lastly, when your symptoms have been abolished, remember that it is healthy for your back to move and to bend as long as you bend through your hips and your knees too. So as you can tell, the Physio U app goes through a full, like if you heard this as a patient who had pain like the, like the patient had in their low back um, physical therapy evaluation, and if you heard uh, your physical therapist tell you all of this, wouldn't you be like, whoa, I know what's going on and I feel really much better about myself because now I know what I'm doing. There is no uncertainty and I know that you'll be able to take care of me because you're explaining exactly everything that I'm feeling. All right, you guys, so that sums it up for explaining all four parts of the physical therapy evaluation. Remember, we had part one, subjective, part two, objective, part three, treatment, and then this video, part four, home exercise program slash education. If you guys got a ton, a ton of value from these videos or from this series, please, please, please share this with somebody that you feel like it will help them. Share this with somebody who is lost or who just doesn't know about what physical therapy is. I feel like this series will give a very good explanation of like, hey, look, this is physical therapy. And if you want to do PT, look at these videos and say, is this what I want to do? Is this how I want to model myself as? Or two, just someone, anyone who's interested, just say, hey, look, check out these PT videos. This is what happens in physical therapy. And always thanks again for giving this video a like, commenting on all of your encouragements and any questions that you may have. And of course, for supporting this channel. I love you guys so much. I hope this video helped inspire some self change to either get into physical therapy school or to empower you to really understand that how much education is so impactful for your practice. Change people, change people. That's why we mother freaking live for change people. <laughs> Have a great one, you guys.